The other thing that troubled me deeply was that, you know, my students, they really love me. They come back, they volunteer, they get extra credit for their high school classes, their, <clears throat> their middle school classes. And some of my boys came back telling me that there were girls who were in the shower room at the middle school and looking at them. And so I inquired, are there girls in the, a parent came to me and asked me to inquire for them, are there girls in the boys' bathroom? And the administration said no. And so uh, the parents pushed on it. And it turns out, of course, that there there were girls in the boys' bathroom showering and undressing. Um, it's just that they're not called girls. They're called boys because they, you know, they say, I identify as a boy. And if you don't enter that delusional world, um, again, you'll be, you'll be um, disciplined. <laughs>...is an award-winning California-based fifth-grade teacher who was suspended for, from his job for believing in two genders, Ray Shelton. Welcome to the Rubin Report. Well, thank you for having me. It's nice to be here. Ray, I have to say, technically, I guess this isn't your first appearance on the Rubin Report because uh, much of my audience will remember this clip that we're going to throw to right now. A couple weeks back, you were on Dr. Phil talking about gender, sexuality, what should and shouldn't be taught in schools, biological reality, and all of that good stuff. Let's get right to it. Transgender boys who might not have their own money to go buy tampons, if they're provided free in the bathroom, it's, it's a huge plus. Men do not menstruate. Only women menstruate. Now, you can call yourself Cis men whatever you don't want. don't menstruate, but trans men do menstruate. No, Same they as don't. non-binary people. <clears throat> Only women. Menstruating is not exclusive yes, to cis is. women. No, it's not. Yes, it is. So explain you're, to me as to why my body menstruated are, at some point. If your chromosomes are XX and you're young, you menstruate. <laughs> if you're XY, you don't. Correct, but what about trans men and non-binary? We're not excluding men. a whole group of they're, people They're women who menstruate. dressed as men. You are not a man. You can pretend to be a man, and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Live your life and tell me what a man is. Well, what's a man to you? You define a man for me. You have chromosomes that are X and Y. That's what a man is. So why are we just looking at the, 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 the science of this as an the example? The science. When, when we've learned sex and gender sex. identity are two very, they're completely different things. They're not completely different They are things. completely different. They're completely different words. And sex is what you're born with, the sexual reproductive organs you have. Gender is what you identify with. They're completely different Well, I don't accept things. that distinction. You have to argue for it. You're just giving a conclusion. You're, you're just making it up. People, the people who hate the truth, the people who hate the truth are because they see, they see the truth as hateful. If, if you want to identify in any way you can, you're free to do so. But that does not mean that the rest of us have to join that illusion. Ray, tell me a little bit before we introduce the, uh, the other fine gentleman here, uh, tell me a little bit about what you were expecting when you accepted doing that show. Uh, did they reach out to you and say, hey, you're gonna be on the opposite side of some of these activists? I mean, how, how did this all come to pass? Well, getting on the Dr. Phil show is actually somewhat of a complicated story. That particular episode that aired on Thursday, the 20th, I believe, of April, was actually taped a year ago. Wow. I, yeah, I was invited as a support member to a guest who was discussing the fact that her daughter had been lured into believing, her teenage daughter was lured into believing that she was actually a boy through social media. And her, the school hid that from the mother. And so this was the mother's story of getting her daughter back. And because I was a public school teacher, uh, they invited me to sort of back her up. Because when you're a guest on The Phil Show, they let you bring three or four people, mm -hmm. you know, so you don't feel so alone. So they taped the first episode, and I spoke for maybe 60 seconds. 
I just said some, something to the effect of, um, these are not my stu- children. These are, I'm a caretaker as a, as a teacher. And it's uh, inappropriate for me to be sc- discussing uh, issues of human sexuality and gender at the elementary level, which is, which is what I teach. So at the end of the taping, uh, Dr. Phil decided, he said, this is, this is good. This is good material. Let's tape a second episode right now, if we would agree to it. Hmm. And I think he wanted something a little spicier, because as soon as we started taping the second show, he immediately brought me in to to speak up more because the other guests were ladies and they were very polite and you know they weren't as direct as I had been previously so the the second part the clip that you just showed actually he, he just kept it in the can for almost a year that's interesting. I mean, welcome to showbiz, man. That's how it works, you know, <laughs> that you do something decent. Next thing you know, they're throwing you back on and taping another show. Uh, before we go any further, there is another box here. And uh, this gentleman is either your cattle rancher or your lawyer. Help me out. Who is this guy? And <laughs> let's let him say hello. This is a great guy. This is my lawyer. I'm going to let him introduce himself. He is fantastic. And uh, I'm glad he's I'm glad he's uh, taking the lead on this. Yeah, when I'm uh, great, David. Tell tell me how you got in the mix here. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just here. You know, when I'm not representing Ray in his legal case, um, I just uh, shovel the horse manure at, at his ranch. <laughs> but but actually, yeah. I, so why does why does an elementary school teacher who's laying out some very obvious truths, things that we all knew to be true that nobody debated ten years ago, uh, why does he not only end up on Dr. Phil as a controversial figure? figure, but then need a lawyer to talk to a guy like me. That's, that's the unfortunate part is I actually came on to help Ray um, after he was removed from his classroom by uh, his school district, um, you know, just came get dragged out of class and placed on administrative leave after he went to a school board meeting, you know, just as a private citizen, as a private person on his own time and decided to speak out against some of these policies that the school districts have. Um, where they are transing children behind their parents' backs and implementing all these policies that really like violate people's right to their personal beliefs and their deeply held religious beliefs, such as, hey, a man is a man, a woman is a woman. There are only two sexes, right? Basic things like that. And because he came and spoke on his own time, he got removed from his classroom and... I'm here having to help him out and represent him for his First Amendment case. Right, so Ray, uh, little known fact, by the way, so you were, you were a teacher at, and I have to say were, because you are currently suspended, is that correct? Well, currently, I'm actually retired. The... You went right from uh, suspension <laughs> to retirement, so they kind of helped you out a little bit? Well, uh, the way the process works is they have an investigation into a complaint uh, that was made, and we can get into that if you want. But I suspected they just wanted to run out the clock on the investigation into my retirement, because once I'm retired, then any sort of complaint just becomes moot. Right, so you were uh, multiple times, twice uh, Glendale School Teacher of the Year. Uh, Yes. This is the Glendale Unified School District. Uh, little known fact, actually, my the Rubin Report as an interview show started in Glendale. My original studio was in Glendale over there, so we've probably been to the same in and out many <laughs> times. Um, what what was going on? What when did you first start seeing this stuff in the school? Let's let's put it that way. Well, the the trans the, the real issue here in terms of what disturbed me as as a as a teacher and as someone who cares deeply about children. I've worked in the Glendale School District for 25 years, and my classroom has been highlighted in local newspapers. I've been a master teacher instructing students from Pepperdine University, from UCLA, and uh, I've served on curriculum review committees. So, uh, you know, I'm a known quantity in terms of district, district resources. In the last several years, 
there's been a, sl a very slow, very quiet introduction of of transgender ideology into the curriculum and into the training sessions with teachers. And there has been no outreach to the parents, no, no transparency. And <clears throat> this last year at, at our school site, uh, we were K through five, two in kindergarten, there is a young boy whose parents are sending him to school dressed as a girl. And there's also a girl whose parents are sending her to school dressed as a boy. And we were informed that we have to use the preferred pronouns that the family wants in addressing these students. If, if for some reason we would need to, as an upper grade teacher, I don't really have contact with the younger kids. So, so there's this issue of compelled speech, which is what exactly got Dr. Peterson uh, in trouble in Canada. So if we do not comply, we will be disciplined and fired. Now, we all know in the corporate world, you have to do certain things you don't particularly like, uh, and you just go along. But what disturbed me is the other children must comply with forced speech, or they will be disciplined and expelled. And that really made me very angry. As a science teacher, obviously, boys can tell other children are boys or girls. And the other thing that troubled me deeply was that, you know, my students, they really love me. They come back, they volunteer, they get extra credit for their high school classes, their, <clears throat> their middle school classes. And some of my boys came back telling me that there were girls who were in the shower room at the middle school and looking at them. And so I inquired, are there girls in the, a parent came to me and asked me to inquire for them, are there girls in the boys' bathroom? And the administration said no. And so uh, the parents pushed on it. And it turns out, of course, that there, there were girls in the boys' bathroom showering and undressing. Um, it's just that they're not called girls. They're called boys because they, you know, they say, I identify as a boy. And if you don't enter that delusional world, um, again, you'll be, you'll be um, disciplined. So, I mean, it's absolutely amazing that a teenage girl can go into a boys' bathroom and restroom and, and shower room and say, I am male, and the other children can do nothing. Right. We usually think about it from a high school perspective. I think we usually think about it the other way because the other way seems more threatening, that it would be a biological boy in a girl's uh, changing room or locker room or whatever. But it's right. interesting that it does go both ways. You know, there's also obviously the issue of, of just purely at a confusion level for a, a parent who is sending their kid to kindergarten, five years old, that they then have to deal with this issue that no five-year-old is thinking about. I mean, I have, my kids aren't five yet, but I have nieces and nephews who've been five years old. The idea that a five-year-old is thinking about this stuff is crazy. Uh, David, I'm, I'm curious, on a, on a legal level, uh, obviously, uh, Ray just mentioned the compelled speech part of this, so there, there's a legal issue around compelled speech. Uh, but what, is there a legal issue around biolo uh, biological reality, as you were talking about before? Like, what is there an ongoing case right now that you're involved in, or you're just kind of making sure that as Ray is out there talking to people that he's not getting into any other trouble with the district or whatever else so, there might be? Yeah, so I think there are two parts to your question. One is, you know, what is the sort of ramification of uh, denying biology in the law, right? And the second question is, what what exactly is going on with with Ray? So I'll start. Yeah, yeah. Right now, since Ray's retired, um, we are we are going to be pursuing a First Amendment case, right? Because the fact that he got dragged out of his class, he didn't get to see he didn't get to see his kids finish the school year, right? He didn't get to see his kids graduate, which is like, which is, you know, one, one of the biggest things for him as a fifth grade teacher. Um, that's one of the most rewarding parts of the school year is seeing uh, his kids move on. So he got denied all of that. So that's, that's the damage, right? Um, those, 
those were the First Amendment violations that caused him, you know, very serious harm, very serious emotional and personal harm. Um, so we're we're raising legal funds right now for his First Amendment defense to bring that case against the school district and get him compensated for what they took away from him. Uh, the you know the second part of your question is, you know, can they just deny biology like that? And right now, sadly, in California, uh, that's what they're pushing through. You've probably seen the crazy bill that um, our infamous Wiener in San Francisco introduced about taking away the children from their parents because they, you know, they try to uphold their biological sex. Mm -hmm. And so in California right now, there, there is that denial. And I think it's, it's crucial to bring these types of cases and push back against the slow encroachment of these woke anti-science ideas um, in order not to just protect people's religious beliefs, but this is a civilizational, this is a um, absolutely important existential threat that we have to fight in the courts. And of course, if the legislature helps us out, great, but we don't expect that in California. So we have to use the courts uh, to maintain some level of sanity here. Yeah, it's just incredible. We did cover this story this week out of Cali. I mean, unbelievable. They literally want to be able to take your child away if you do not quote unquote affirm their gender. Although, as I often say, the surgeries and the chemical castration, everything else is probably the least affirming uh, thing that you could possibly do. David, as a teacher, can you just talk about the general state of confusion that's going on with the kids uh, in terms of I know you're not a kindergarten teacher, but you mentioned the, the kindergarten class, but even in fifth grade, that this stuff seems to be talked about all the time, everywhere, between the kids, teachers, et cetera. I have no recollection, certainly in elementary school, of a teacher ever bringing up sex or anything <laughs> like that. Yeah, I mean, I guess my friends and I joked about silly things or, you know, we saw uh, Porky's or whatever movie was out there at the time, but like, I'm dating myself, but. But, but that this stuff has infiltrated virtually everything culturally for these kids. Well, you're correct. Uh, you know, when I was in sixth grade, I actually thought that babies were made by French kissing. <laughs> <laughs> so, only in France, only in France. So that's going to that's gonna date me. I cannot stress, I cannot stress how insidious this ideology is in destroying the minds of children and confusing them. And it's meant to do that. This, this, is, not, this is not an innocent, let's all uh, accept each other and tolerate each other, because I don't think anyone um, is bothered by, the, by someone like Caitlyn Jenner, <clears throat> excuse me, Caitlyn Jenner, or... Deirdre McCloskey or something like that. I don't think that's a particular issue. But this is actually the training and recruitment and sexualization of children. And I, I do have a visual aid. I do have show and tell. Uh, <laughs> Great. <laughs> just quick, just quick. Um, so aside from lessons that we were supposed to do, which I did not do, um, there are, there are lots and lots of books in our library, our school library. We're a K through five. Here is one book, and I, I hope the letters are facing the mm -hmm. right way. Mm -hmm. Now, it says, I'm not a girl, but what's important is to look at the illustration and the text. All right? This is, this is a book which is meant for first and second graders. Unbelievable. So you can see that it's a picture book to be read. And at the end, of course, at the end, what happens is she gets a haircut and she says she's a boy. Uh, so this is integrated into all of the lessons. Here is a, here's an even, uh, this, is, this one's meant for kindergarten, actually. This is uh, called, uh, let's see here, they, she, he, me. And it's, <clears throat> it's, it really is a very simple, it's quite beautiful too. The artwork is actually gorgeous. Um, I mean, if you, I like children's books. So, <laughs> so but here is, here's some of the artwork that's inside. And on the back it says, pronouns serve as a familiar starting point for kids and grown-ups to expand ideas about gender 
and celebrate personal expression. Um, but when you're teaching language to children, especially to immigrants, and Glendale, as you know, has many, many immigrants, uh, language is a tool to be used for thought, to make conceptual distinctions, to understand the world, and later on uh, to engage in self-reflection and have personal relationships and find happiness and productivity in the world. This is sets out to destroy the human mind, uh, to confuse uh, the human mind. And as I'm sure you both know, in other languages, <clears throat> sometimes they do not have dual pronouns or they lack articles. I mean, in Korean, there's no articles. There's no A, there's no the. Mm -hmm. And in helping people learn to speak English correctly so that they can be successful in, in the economic world, I mean, it's, it's just awful. It's just awful. It's, it's a world of make-believe. It's a, it's a world, it's teaching, um, it's teaching children a very damaging form of narcissism. And can, I, can I jump in there? What is, Ray, can I just, just yeah, please sure, David, for a sec? Because, you know, the, the book, um, what you just talked about, the indoctrination, and the fact that you have, you know, so many immigrant children in that district. Well, you know, I was one of them. Back in the day, I was one of those immigrant children. Um, I was born in Soviet Ukraine. I, I started school in the Soviet Union. And when I was starting school, this is exactly the type of indoctrination that they introduced us to. Um, all our children's books, all those things, it was all about, you know, glorifying communism, glorifying great, you know, great grandfather Lenin, all those things, the hero of the revolution. And it was exactly those types of um, attractive, you know, drawings and really, um, really uh, insightful and interesting things for kids that basically put that worm in our brains from the very beginning, you know, to be a member of the party, right? Like we had books about uh, joining, you know, the Young Communist Party. Right, the the come from wall and all that, and you know we had little pins that we used to wear. So this is this is using that same exact playbook um, to do this to our kids, to sexualize them, and to really just uh, extinguish everything we've built on uh, in terms of Western civilization. So you know all these parallels. That's why I think you have all these Armenian parents standing up and fighting against it because this is exactly what they saw when they were growing up. So you, you mentioned the Armenian parents. So Glendale has a huge Armenian population and I'm gonna throw to some video, we can, we can talk over it, we'll just play it as B-roll, of some of the protests uh, that happened in the last couple of weeks, weeks where the parents basically were just out there saying don't sexualize our kids and then the radical activists uh, were out there demanding sort of all of the things we've been laying out here. It actually got violent at one point, couple arrests, et cetera, et cetera. What I found interesting about it, uh, beyond the obvious stuff, was that the way the media framed it was that these were pro-LGBT protesters versus anti-LGBT protesters, except these parents are just parents who just don't want state educators or state employees talking to their kids uh, about sex and gender identity and the rest of it. So actually, David, let me go back to you quick on this. What, what can the parents do legally at this point? If California is as crazy as we all seem to think, and as you guys probably know, I fled California a year and a half ago, partly because I knew this stuff was coming. What can a parent who has a kid at a public school that is going through all of this, that does not have a teacher like Ray who's doing the right thing, but is in a class, third grade class, fourth grade class, that's being indoctrinated, does that parent have any legal uh, recourse? Absolutely. Um, you know, there's a there's a long history of precedent from the Supreme from our Supreme Court that uh, parents have the right to dictate the values that their children are inculcated with. So, you know, I, I think we can use that as a weapon long term. But on on a day to day basis, sort of the um, the, the simple stuff is. Talk to your talk to your children. Make sure you have a very strong relationship. Um, get copious notes of what's going on in their school, in their classroom. Uh, do FOIA requests, right? Public records requests, and don't give up uh, because these school districts are very sneaky and they're very evasive in terms of producing relevant documents. 
uh, keep at it. If you need to, and this is important, you know, once you've collected enough information, talk to a lawyer because there are there are vulnerabilities, right? This is th these laws in California. Um, they're sort of like the Death Star, but there is a vulnerability. There is that. There's always a way to blow up a Death Star. <laughs> exactly. So you know, we have ways. Um, I think I'm not I'm not ready to disclose them yet because the other side is obviously listening. Sure. Uh, but they exist and we're working on it. So collect collect as much evidence as you can and find a lawyer. You know, if not me, there there are a handful of lawyers uh, in California who are very good at this and who are dedicated to this fight. So that's that's what I would say is get the evidence. Make sure you, uh, you know, you get on the school, tell them you're not okay with it, and then talk to a lawyer. Ray, what kind of support are you getting? I'm guessing mostly, unfortunately, on the DL from other teachers and, and staff members, you know, administrative staff, that sort of thing, and also from parents. Uh, because we know one of the main issues here is that everyone's afraid of getting canceled these days. So they're probably afraid of now being seen out at the local restaurant with you. Well... <clears throat> In, in, terms of, in, in terms of Glendale, as you know, it is fairly conservative as a community. And <clears throat> I can say that at my school site, or my former school site, at least two-thirds of the staff completely reject this uh, transgender ideology. Uh, it, the people that I work with, they were completely against it. They understood clearly what was going on, and they just avoided it as much as possible. Unfortunately, not a single one of them has said anything, and I understand. I don't blame them because they have children, they have spouses. Now, the same thing with the parents. Many of the parents at my school, my views are, my views about a, a lot of issues um, uh, I, I've never been, quote unquote, politically correct. And my parents know that. And parents often request me specifically for that. I mean, over the years. <clears throat> so the parents have been fantastic. The, the parents, uh, I mean, they've, I've always had a very good, loving relationship with all my parents because my goal as a teacher is to help their student to help their student learn, to develop their mind, and to, you know, to be a good teacher, you have to be able to reach a student's mind where they are, where their consciousness is, and help them build a bridge. And my focus has always been the students. And so I, I've, I have a fantastic rep. So the parents are behind me. But unfortunately, again, you know, they usually have businesses and they're terrified. Of, of being mobbed, of being doxxed, which I was, um, and, and losing their business. So everybody basically tries to stay under the radar. Um, I'm going to let, we... let David finish with another promotion of the, of the uh, crowdfunding to help you guys out. But uh, Ray, just one or two more for you. First off, mm -hmm. uh, do you want to be retired now? I mean, we do have a lot of Great teaching, place, a, lot of, a, lot of great, a lot of great places of teaching, also known as schools here in Florida, where uh, you would be welcomed, obviously. Well, you know, I, I would have continued working here for a few more years, except I knew I just couldn't stomach it. So, no, my, my career as a teacher is not over. The, it's just a matter of where the next step is in terms of, of finding a position to be productive in the world. Okay, I have one more question for you then, which is was it, when I was going through my notes this morning, uh, one of my guys pointed out, you happen to be gay. Uh, I would say happen to be because uh, <laughs> I happen to be gay. It is what it is. It's not that interesting, actually. Um, but people find it interesting when having this specific conversation. Um, I didn't know that about you until 10 minutes before we started. But does that play a role in this somehow? or change the optics of it somehow, or give you insight somehow into what your feelings are around all of this? Well, uh, uh, my first gay march was in 1980, you know, so 40, over 40 years ago. And um, 
I've always been openly gay. My parents know that. My colleagues know that. And I think it does. I think it frightens the school district in particular because I know exactly what they're doing. Just like the left used gay Americans as a tool they, uh, to try to divide Americans, they are now doing this with the transgender issue. The other thing is that the parents are not anti-gay at all. Mm-hmm. And that is how the left wants to keep painting them instead of taking them seriously. You know, at this riot that I was there, I was down there watching everything. The other side was Antifa and the and a few Proud Boys. They had helmets, they had their faces covered. Uh, one of the Antifa characters pulled out a knife and tried to stab one of the Armenian fathers. And, and the, <clears throat> he was arrested. It turns out, guess what? He's a child molester. Okay? He's been arrested for sexual activity with a 14-year-old girl. So the real division was Antifa, Proud Boys, and, you know, the alphabet soup people, the mm-hmm. crazy people, mm-hmm. right? The LGB, X, Y. There is no such people. There is no such community. Uh, you know, I'm a gay man. I'm not a lesbian. I'm not transgender, right? I'm, <laughs> it's made up. It's just made up. Uh, in order to to make a box for to try to gain political votes, uh, to, and the issue of homosexuality has nothing nothing to do with transgenderism at all, and it's just a way of them trying to ride on our backs. So as a gay man, and I think this is part of the reason why I was removed from my classroom so quickly, because it's one thing you know to have a straight guy, you know, they can easily just call him a bigot, but they can't do that with me. So I think it's, and I think it's more important that more and more uh, gay Americans speak up in particular and go to the front of the line with this and saying, no, sexualizing children is wrong. Um, So I do think, I do think it, it is important. And I do think it, you know, I haven't, I actually haven't talked to my lawyer about this, but I do think that my district in in removing me violated the anti-discrimination laws of California. I think I was targeted because I was gay. Mm-hmm. No, the, this thing about not fitting into the intersectional calculator in, in the way that they want probably does lend to something related uh, to that, I, for sure. Uh, David, if you have any other final thoughts, and then I want you to promote the, uh, the crowdfunding so that we can raise some funds for you guys, because obviously this is a worthwhile cause. And of course, we'll put the Thank link you. down below. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, so we're on Gifts and Go, uh, because GoFundMe is run by commies. Uh, so again, <laughs> Gifts and Go, you know, just go on the website. You just search for Ray Shelton, uh, search under Ray's name, and you'll find our uh, First Amendment Legal Defense Fund. So please, yeah, anything you can do to contribute, uh, we, both Ray and I really appreciate it. Yes, we really do. It's really, really important because this isn't about me. It's about me. I'm, it's about trying to help change our culture at least a little bit into the right direction. And it's about protecting children. That's really what it's about. And Ray, if this was a Hollywood show, this is where I would say, now stay. We're going to do another show that's going to be much more (laughs) controversial and we'd get you into a lot of trouble. But this is the Internet. We do things a little bit differently. Uh, I thank you guys for your time. And if I can help out in any other way, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you so much for having uh, having us. uh, God bless you. And um, thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Dave. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of mindless drivel, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.